In many different open source projects repositories, you'll often find one widely used yet seldom mentioned algorithm. Such seemingly unrelated software as TensorFlow, Maven, Airflow, Apache Beam, Postgres, and even Rust's very own compiler and Rust analyzer either have an implementation of this algorithm or use a library provided implementation. Today, we'll take a look at this algorithm. It's called topological sorting, and this is more than Ratchetech. I'm beyond excited about today's episode. In fact, this is my by far favorite algorithm. It combines graphs, um, hash maps, hash sets. It's very efficient. It's quite easy to implement. It's used in many different applications. And for me personally, it played a significant role in my career because a lot of my work was with databases, query engines, data processing, stuff like that. And you essentially cannot do any of that if you don't know this algorithm. So as we've seen from our little intro montage, topological sorting is used in such diverse software as compilers, linkers, spreadsheets, databases, orchestration systems, analytics engines, schedulers, and so forth. The question then is, what does it do? And the answer is it returns nodes of a directed graph in a topological order. If you need a refresh of what a graph is and what a directed graph is, I have a video of this uh, short introduction and example how to implement graphs in Rust. You can check it out. Topological order, on the other hand, is an order in which any dependencies of any node are placed before it. If in our graph an edge from node A to node B means that a depends on B, B will always go before A in topological order. Not every graph has a topological order. If you have cycles in your graph, it will not have topological order. And topological order is usually not unique for a specific graph that has it. In fact, you often will have a set of different topological orders. Now, topological sorting algorithm just guarantees that it will return you one of those topological orders if it exists. So for example, let's consider a dependency tree of web framework Axon. We will not, of course, use the whole thing because it's a bit too large, but we will take a random sample, so to speak. You can see that Axon depends on such things as MIME, Axon Core, and Tower. And Axon Core depends on MIME, Tower Layer, and Tower Service. Below, you can see an example of a topological order for this graph. It does have a topological order because it has no cycles and it's directed. And it has multiple topological orders. For example, if you sweep tower layer and mime in the order that we show below, it still will be in topological order. How to verify it? Let's take any dependency, for example, Axum Core. Axum Core depends on MIME, Tower Layer, and Tower Service. And if you look at our topological order, we can see that MIME, Tower Layer, and Tower Service are all before Axum Core. Axum depends on Axum Core, and we can see that indeed, Axum is the last, and Axum Core goes before it. That applies to any of those nodes. And this property makes this ordering one of possible topological orderings for this graph. There are two algorithms that you can use to find the topological ordering for a given graph. One is based on depth first search, and we will not be looking at it because depth first search deserves its own episode. The other one that we will explore in this video is Kant's algorithm from 1962. There is a little complication every time we talk about graph algorithms because graphs can be implemented in multiple different ways. For example, in my graph representation video, I use indexed hash maps. In this video, we will use plain hash maps. What is important when we discuss an algorithm though is which capabilities your graph implementation provides and how fast those capabilities can be executed. To represent that, we typically use so-called abstract data types. It's essentially an interface or if you will trade description which needs to be satisfied for you to be able to use an algorithm on a given piece of data. So in our case, we need to have three core capabilities. We need to be able to get dependence of any node. So anything that depends on this specific node that we call dependency. We need to be able to resolve dependencies and we should be able to return nodes that don't have any dependencies anymore. So for example, if you resolved all of those dependencies with the resolve function, 
or if there were no dependencies to begin with. Now we can look at a small slice from an Exum example and run Kant's algorithm on it. You always start with selecting all current no dependency nodes. In this case, there are two, it's MIME and TAU layer. We now iterate through the no dependencies vector. And whenever we find new nodes that don't have any dependencies anymore, we will add them and eventually we'll also go through them. In this case, let's take MIME. We can call resolve on that. So we remove this dependency from the graph. We can then resolve tower layer. Now, Axum core doesn't have any dependencies, so we can put it into no dependencies vector. We can then resolve it. And now, Axum doesn't have any more dependencies, so we can resolve it as well. And now, we don't have any nodes remaining, so we know that algorithm has finished. What we have in the result vector is our topological ordering. And now, it's time for a Rust implementation. In this example, we will go with a simple directed graph representation based on hash maps. In this case, because we both need to figure out what are the dependencies of each node, and also for each node, what are its dependencies, we will use two essentially mirror hash maps, depends on and dependence. And we will also have no dependencies vector. Given our little example, here what we will expect to see in depends on hash map and in dependence hash map. In depends on, for example, you can see that Axum has dependencies listed as Axum core and MIME. And if you look at dependence hash map, we can see that Axum core is a dependency of Axum and MIME is a dependency of both Axum and Axum core. And we use hash sets because they allow us to both efficiently check a presence of an element in the set or remove an element from the set. All of those fields we put into state struct, and now we can look at methods that we implement for the state struct and some helper functions that we implement for our graph representation. Of course, we will need to be able to somehow build those graphs. So we have an add edge function that takes immutable reference to a graph and two vertices from and to. We also require the generic type of vertices to implement equality, hash, and copy traits. The body of the function uses entry API for the graph hash map. And in case if there is already an associated hash set with a given from vertex, we just insert two vertex into this hash set. Or if there is no hash set yet, we create it, insert two vertex into it, and set it as a value of the from vertex in the hash map. For state struct, we implement get dependence method, which is just a proxy to get method on dependence hash map in this case. This will get all nodes that depend on the dependency vertex. We also can implement method is resolved, which will check if we still have anything in the depends on hash map. Our algorithm will clear this hash map in our resolve method that we can see right here. Whenever we say that we resolve dependency vertex for the dependent vertex, we first get the mutable reference to the dependencies hash set for that dependent vertex. We then remove the dependency from it. And in case the dependencies hash set is now empty, we push this dependent vertex into no depths vector. And we also clear it out of the depends on hash map, which will allow us to check if a vertex was resolved and will also allow us to return unresolved vertices in case we cannot find a topological order for a graph. This will essentially be a cycle that we found. So for that, we also have a helper method unresolved. Now we can look at the topological sort algorithm itself and with our helpers, it is delightfully simple. In this case, we wanted to make it generic. So the only thing we require is that our dependencies are represented as some type T that can be converted into state struct. And state struct has a generic type parameter that we call ID. This is our vertex ID. We require this type parameter to implement equality, hash, and copy traits. And given all of that, the function will return a result, which can be either a vector of topologically ordered nodes, or it will return a boxed error in case topological order cannot be found. We start with initializing our result as an empty vector. We create a mutable state variable from our dependencies graph. And then as long as we can pop a node without dependencies from our state, we push that node into our result. Then we get all the nodes that depend on this node 
call them dependents, and for each of those dependents, we resolve them in our state. In the end, if our state is not resolved, we return an error, otherwise we return a resulting topological order. We looked at how topological sorting is implemented and what it does, but usually this algorithm is used as part of other larger algorithms or as a building block to do some specific data processing. In that case, we'll look at an example from the sales demo that I covered in the previous video. The crucial part of any spreadsheet is evaluation. Whenever users enter some formulas, you want to be able to compute them. And those formulas typically refer to other cells as well using cell IDs. So you need to evaluate cells in a specific order. And that's exactly where topological sorting gets into the play because that order is topological order. So let's look at how we implement this evaluation functionality. First of all, we will need to figure out how to make a state structure that we use in our implementation of topological sorting from the spreadsheet data. And spreadsheet data is implemented as hash map, which maps cell IDs to expressions that are stored in those cells. And expressions can be numbers or cell references or apply variant which accepts an operator and a vector of other expressions on which it needs to apply this operator. This way you can build complex expressions that have multiple sub-expressions because this is essentially a tree data structure. Now to convert this to state that we will use for topological sorting in the evaluation function for the spreadsheet, we will implement from trade from this hash map to the state of cell IDs. The implementation is very straightforward. We create an empty state. We then go through all cells that have expressions in them. And for each of those expressions, we get a list of cell IDs on which the expression depends on. And in case that there are no dependencies, we push the current cell ID into the no depths field in the state struct. In case there are dependencies, we take those dependency cell IDs and for each of them, we create corresponding edges in depends on and dependence hash maps. Now we can look at the eval function itself. It accepts uh, a hash map from cell IDs to expressions, the data that we store in our spreadsheet, and it returns a result which in case there are no errors will contain a hash map from cell IDs to expressions, but in this case, those expressions will be evaluated where possible. So instead of formulas, for example, we will have numbers. We create an empty hash map called values. Here we will store our evaluated values for each cell ID as we go through them in case those cells evaluate to number. And then we call our topological sorting implementation on the expressions hash map. And for each cell ID in the topological order, we get the corresponding expression. If it's a number, we push it into the values hash map. If it's a reference to some other cell, we just copy the value of that cell from the values hash map into the current cell ID as well. And if it is an apply expression, we call a method eval on this expression passing an immutable reference to the values hash map. If this evaluation succeeds, we insert the corresponding value to the values hash map as well. Now, because we go through things in topological order, it means that all dependencies for each of those cells IDs will already be evaluated and will be in the values hash map as long as there is some kind of a formula or number in the corresponding cell ID. If you take a quick look at how evaluation method is implemented on expression itself, we can see that we use this values hash map as a context, and then we just do recursive evaluation. So for example, if we have a reference to some cell, we will get it from the context. And if you take, for example, a binary operator, some cell like addition, we will call eval on each of the arguments first, pass in this context, which should contain all the dependencies because we are evaluating everything in a topological order, and we collect the evaluated arguments, and then we can just apply normal mass on the values of those arguments. I hope this gives you an idea why all this software we showed in the beginning uses topological sourcing. Essentially, whenever you deal with dependencies, all recursive data structures that depend on each other, all computations that depend on each other, or cells in a spreadsheet that depend on each other, or build dependencies. In all those cases, you can use topological sorting. For example, you can build artifacts so that whenever you build each artifact, all of its dependencies are already built. Thank you for watching. 
as usual, don't forget to like and subscribe. You can find the code and all the other references for this video in the description. And if you have any ideas or any suggestions what you wish I could cover next time, please write it in the comments. See you next time.